Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of the season of Easter. Uh, thank you to those who are uh, joining us wherever you may be this day. And we pray for all of you who worship with us this morning that you would be built up and nourished by this time together. Uh, I want to make sure to thank this morning our music director, Hondo Nakur, and uh, musician and cantor Brad Spellacy uh, from the balcony today, uh, leading our music, and uh, Soren Duhom for acolyting and reading today as the assisting minister. The uh, service can be found in uh, the, the bulletin attached to our website at clcdallas.org. You can download that, um, that uh, open that file and follow along with all of the music and the readings. Uh, the one note about worship today is that um, since uh, after Easter Sunday, um, I have decided to change the service from a uh, service of Holy Communion to a service of the Word. So, uh, so there will not be a celebration of communion today, and I'll say a little bit more about that uh, in, in a few minutes. Uh, those are today's announcements. I invite you to please stand as you are able for our processional hymn, That Easter Day with Joy Was Bright. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, risen. is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Whose blood 
Your son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading today is from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore let the entire house of Israel know that with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listen to my supplication. For the Lord has has given given it it to me whenever I call. The cords of death entangled me, the anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I I called upon the God has done for me. I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious is in your sight, O Lord, is the death servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. The second reading today is from 1 Peter, chapter 1. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed for the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, that like a lamb without defect or blemish, he was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. According to John. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Now on that same day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. When he said to them, then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And I invite the young people who are with us today to come on up as close as you safely can, and we will visit for just a minute. Hope everybody's doing well today. Thank you for taking a few minutes for, uh, to uh, sit with us today. And I pray that you are well and strong at home with your families. And how about you, Benjamin Bullfrog? What? No, I mean, how are you doing? How are you doing today? Who is this Benjamin Bullfrog you speak of? Well, um, it's... You? I do not know who you are talking about. Well, if you're not Benjamin Bullfrog, who exactly are you? I am Benito El Ranito. Uh, okay, uh, Benedict the Little Frog. Okay, well, um, so, so uh, to me, I'm pretty sure that you are my friend and longtime co-worker, Benjamin Bullfrog. <laughs> How can you tell? I'm wearing a mask and everything. Well, okay, first of all, let's talk about the mask. What's, what's the deal with the mask? Well, it's, it's for safety, right? When we go out in public, or when even when we're with people who are good friends, like you, Pastor Ben, we're supposed to be wearing masks. Well, yeah, but we're supposed to be wearing masks over, over our, our mouths, like that, to keep droplets from our mouths and our noses from going out. And, and infecting other people. A mask over our eyes, it, 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 that's not going to help even a little bit. 
I guess I should have read all the way to the bottom of the news story. Yeah, you probably should have and looked at the pictures too and, and, just, and just seen. But, but seriously though, Pastor Ben, how, how did you see through my disguise? Well, the, the thing, the thing uh, Benjamin uh, uh, Bullfrog, is that when we know someone well, we don't just recognize them by sight. We know how it feels to be around them. We know what it's what you know. We we know what they sound like. We know how they how they do gestures. We know how they talk. We know them in a way that goes beyond even being able to see their faces. Oh, I see. Yeah. So so um, so I can know that it's you, even if you had a costume over your entire body. I would still know that it's my friend and colleague, Benjamin Bullfrog. So, so what's the deal with the story today? The people didn't recognize Jesus. Well, that's right. They didn't recognize him. Because this goes the other way, too. Depending on the situation, I might see you just like this, and, and I might not be able to, to uh, necessarily recognize you if, I am having, if I'm really sad, or if I'm really angry, or if something has happened to me that makes me forget. So the people, Jesus' friends, who walk with him on the road today, they, they, they should recognize Jesus, but for some reason they can't. And something happens that allows them to see Jesus for who he is. And we're going to talk a little bit more about, about what that is. Yes. Ooh, it's the breaking of the bread. Right, it's the breaking of the bread, which Christians do, um, you know, ever after, is the way that they recognize Jesus, who has been hidden from, from them. He must have had a really good mask, like better than mine. Yeah, it probably was. It probably was a really good mask, yeah. yeah. Um, but what we pray for is that we would see Jesus whenever he appears to us, in his words, in his sacrament, and in the people around us. Um, whether they are wearing a mask or not. Right, right, right. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for your church. Thank you for Jesus who appears to us and comes to us in the words we hear and in the bread we share. Help us to look for him today and always. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you, friends. You can go back to your seats. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Sisters and brothers, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the whole long history of humans telling each other stories, there are certain figures or themes that come up over and over again. In different times, in different places, in different languages, there are things that we see over and over. And one that is especially fascinating, at least to me, is the story of mistaken identity. And there are two versions of the mistaken identity story. In one version, a stranger or an unfamiliar person appears in the form or in the guise of someone who is known and maybe loved. This is uh, sometimes called the doppelganger. Uh, story uh, from the German, uh, from the, the, the German language, or the changeling, when one character is is sort of whisked away and replaced with a lookalike. The other version of the mistaken identity story is the familiar person, the true person, who uh, is obscured who does not appear as he or she is to the people who know him or her. Something in us loves stories of mistaken identity. We must, because we keep coming back to them over and over and over again. 
They are uncanny. They make things familiar to us seem strange, and they make the strange things seem familiar. They are all over in the scriptures. In uh, 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 the doppelganger story, uh, we hear both kinds of these. The doppelganger story appears in, in, the, in the scriptures, especially in the New Testament. Jesus says that the devil can appear like an angel of light. And in another place, he says that there will be false messiahs, or as we call them later, antichrists, who, uh, false messiahs who will mimic the, the, the words and the rhetoric of the true messiah and lead people astray. People will follow the copy rather than staying true to the original. In the New Testament, the devil is almost a doppelganger of Jesus. He is one who mimics the true, the, the true Messiah, uh, in order to draw away those who might be deceived. And we also hear stories of the true person being hidden or mistaken for someone else. So, uh, Joseph, when he is a young man, is beaten and left for dead by his brothers in a well but makes his way to Egypt. And years and years later, in the book of Genesis, his brothers are afflicted with a famine in the land of Canaan, where they live. They come down to Egypt to get food, because Egypt has food. And Joseph is in charge of the whole kingdom. They come to Joseph to ask him for food, and he recognizes them, but they do not know who he is. They do not know that they are asking their brother, whom they nearly murdered, for help. In, in John's Gospel, on the morning of Christ's resurrection, Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb and sees him, but mistakes him for the gardener. Long before the time of the New Testament, uh, in, 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 uh, uh, in the Greek ancient Greek civilization, the poet Homer told the story of Odysseus, who is away from home for 20 years, 10 years fighting the Trojan War, terrible war, and 10 years in a, a, a journeying on the sea, terrible, terrible travels, and finally coming home to his island kingdom. And he appears in the guise of a wizened old beggar. And 20 years people have been waiting for him and no one recognizes him. Not his servants, not his son, not even his wife, who is endangering her life by waiting for him to return. The only one who recognizes Odysseus is his dog. His dog knows his master and, and recognizes him. In the gospel story we hear today, Jesus appears to his disciples, but the story says their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Last week, Thomas saw Jesus and believed, but this week, even seeing is not enough. It harkens back to the warning that God gives the prophet Isaiah, that people will see and see, but they will not understand. They will hear and hear. They will keep on hearing, but they will not, will, they will not perceive. They will not understand. And there is something true about that, that we can see something, we can know it back and forth and still not truly perceive what it is. Have you ever had an experience like that? Where you failed to recognize someone known to you who was right in front of your face? You maybe knew you knew them, but you didn't know who they were. Or on the other hand, have you had the experience of being convinced, of being absolutely convinced that some stranger that you encounter on the street or, or, or at the, the, the shop or in the airport is really a, a long lost friend or a family member or a lover? These moments are uncanny because they tell us that our memories are not reliable. They, they suggest to us that our, our perceptions, our senses, are not trustworthy. And that, in fact, our own identity, who we are for other people, who other people are for us, is not 
perfectly stable. Jesus appears to these two friends as a stranger. As a stranger, he hears the story of his own arrest, of the crushing of the messianic hopes, and of the empty tomb. As a stranger, he teaches his two companions about the, the, the promises of the Messiah in the scriptures, that everything had to happen as it did. And as a stranger, he is about to leave them for the night. But as a stranger, he is invited in to the room at Emmaus where the two are staying. And they plead with him, stay with us. It is evening. The day is now nearly over. Why do they ask him to stay? In the first instance, they ask him to stay because he is a stranger, because he is not Jesus to them. He is just another traveler on a dangerous road, a fragile human in a hostile world, and they are fulfilling the basic human obligation, the, the fundamental solidarity of offering shelter and hospitality, an obligation in the ancient world that was so powerful that those who broke it were considered a curse. But at the same time, they offer Jesus shelter because on some level he is not a stranger to them. Because he is Jesus for them. Because they have heard something of Jesus, their friend, their Lord, in his words. And their hearts have burned within them for reasons that they do not understand. And so they say, stay with us. In his word, Jesus comes to us very often as a stranger. He puzzles. He surprises with words and actions that we would never expect and may not want to hear. He shocks us with words of condemnation and judgment. He astonishes us with miracles we may or may not find plausible. And in his word, he comes as a friend. He loves those around him. He heals the sick. He comforts those who are afflicted. He forgives the sinner. At times, our eyes are kept from recognizing him in his words, in his severity, in his extravagant miracles. Who is this Jesus? Who is this Savior? Yet he walks with us in these words. We hear them over and over. They change for us because we change. And we are at a different point on that road, day by day, year by year. And what we see and what we hear changes for us over and over again. But we know that he is there. And then they sit to eat. And Jesus, acting more as a host than as a guest, takes the, the bread, blesses it, and breaks it, as if to give to the others. And in that moment, their eyes are healed and he is revealed to them in a sudden flash. And just as suddenly, he vanishes. If Jesus may be either friend or a stranger in his, in his words, and was to those around him in his own day, Jesus and those around him have always been at home, and were always most at home at the table together. If he shocked and astonished and frightened in his words, he brought together, he put at ease, he showed affection consistently around the table. And the breaking of the bread is where he does not just speak to us, but it turned out in all of those meals and all of those towns with all of those people, 
he was preparing to give himself to us. And it is also where he disappears into us, leaving us behind as his body in the world. Christians have met Jesus and seen Jesus here together ever since through times of, of civic strife and violence, through error and conflict in the church, whatever may be happening, this is where we have gathered to see with our eyes and with our hearts, wayward as they may be at every other time, the Christ who gives himself to us. And we have continued here, even though we cannot gather as a, a group. Two people are enough for the sacrament that has been true for us for hundreds of years. But from now until we can be together, I've decided that we will refrain. We should be fasting together if we cannot feast together. And I will not do for myself and my household what I cannot do for anyone else. And this is, this is a, a hard thing for me because I have always fled back to that breaking of the bread. When the word was puzzling or perplexing, when, when my own journey from, from one place to another on this road has been vexed or troublesome, this is where I have always been able to flee. But it is for all of us. Not just for those who can safely be here at a given moment. And so it falls to us to listen and to see with the eyes of our heart the way Jesus comes to us in his words in each other, in this world that is at so great a threat for unjust and unequal responses to this crisis, in a world that is so desperate for healing, that now will be a time when we let our hearts burn within us, when we let our hearts burn for that justice, burn for that vision of Christ, not simply here in church, but in a world that can and must be reconciled. And when we gather together again, and when we can break bread together, we will do it with a new hope and a new appreciation for what God has already worked among us and what God may yet do for all of this suffering world. Amen. in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he crucified by the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people the people of this land, and of all the nations, in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all who whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. We ask your special blessing on those newly baptized, on those celebrating baptismal anniversaries, Abby and Caroline, and on those celebrating birthdays, Ellen, Kylie, Vivian, Judy, Willie Mae, Tracy, and Matt. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We remember especially Brenda, Brooke, Janine, Chester, Rick, Dolores, Terry, Morris, Joanne, Clayton, Dot, Bart, Catherine, Virginia, and Mark. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Ken Star, uh, Kelly Fletcher, Mac, Judy, Matt, and Bob, that your will may, for them may be fulfilled. We ask your blessing and comfort on all who mourn them, and we, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift up to you, O Lord, those prayers that are on our hearts or minds this day, silently or aloud. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of Christ's peace with those around you.
Please stand as you are able. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. And now, Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in everything good, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. And Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Change lives. Let us, Let us go, go out in peace and share the good, good news. news.